GNOME 44 has just released and will soon come to many Linux distributions. So what better time to pick on GNOME for all of the flaws that I've experienced over the past year. Before we start though, I want to let you know that this is not a GNOME is bad video. Since I could easily make such a list for every single operating system or desktop environment out there. That being said, let's start off with a more harmless, but ever so annoying feature, I guess is the right word for it? Thumbnails. No, not these. These ones. On most distros, GNOME ships with its own video app, lesser known as Totem. This application also allows GNOME's file manager Nautilus to display previews of videos. Until it suddenly doesn't. After a fresh installation, it's basically hit or miss if it works or not. And the best part is that even if it works just fine, it just randomly breaks. Resolving this issue is also not that easy, since sometimes you just need to remove some cached files, other times you need to reinstall the videos app or just switch to a different method altogether. This of course is also hit or miss due to dependencies and whatnot. So yeah, not having video thumbnails sucks, but it can be fixed with, I'm gonna say the right amount of effort. Moving on, let's talk about GNOME's Wayland implementation. Dragging and dropping files from one application to another can be a nightmare sometimes. For example, sometimes I cannot drag something from a browser into DaVinci Resolve. Sometimes I can't drag and drop upload something on the website. Sometimes the drag and drop functionality straight up refuses to realize that I want to upload something. And the list goes on and on. Some programs work better than others though, which suggests that this is a shared issue between app developers, GNOME and also Wayland, since most things do work on Xorg. But given that Wayland and especially GNOME's implementation of it have seen some massive improvements over the past year, it feels more like an unnecessary hassle because Wayland is the default nowadays on many distros. So yeah, I hate drag and drop. And speaking of stuff I hate, what's up with that ugly login screen? Yeah, this is a minor thing to complain about and might even be by choice, but I don't like it. Now apparently GNOME 44 comes with a new login screen, but I think that that one is actually just for unlocking the screen for an already logged in user, so we'll need to see. But it looks nice though. Almost as nice as the broken Blurmer shell extension where you use more than one monitor on Wayland. Funny thing, even though many told me that it is the extension's fault, I always knew that it was something else. And it was. See, the thing is that when the screens are not centered beside each other, then the extension breaks. Now, for me, centering the displays is simple since one monitor has a higher resolution, but how do you center it on, let's say, two 1080p monitors? Because snap to, let's say, the lower border is not considered centered by GNOME, even though it technically is. Changes have already been requested, so stay tuned for that one. <laughs> Fractional scaling or scaling in general. Like, I don't know what they were thinking here, but only having two options might not be the right choice here. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But hey, even if we could scale correctly, sometimes it just breaks for no reason and suddenly the scaling is off. Not sure why this happens and it only applies to one group and not others beside it. But while we are here, let's talk about another thing that bothers me. The start menu icons. Why is there no dedicated directory for it in home? Why is it hidden away in a bunch of subdirectories? Removing shortcuts to web pages or unnecessary icons for applications that came with another always feels like a chore. Why not create a directory for the start menu right here? I mean, you could separate the icons displayed when searching from the ones that are visible by default. This would prevent accidental deletions. It would also mean double entries for some applications. So I guess it's still not the perfect solution, but it's way better than what we have now. Moving on, let's talk about a feature that was actually removed from GNOME a while back and is now slowly making its comeback. Showing apps running in the background. For the past couple of years, you always needed an extension to show them in the top bar. And many, including myself, find this feature essential. Especially when you have programs like Steam or Discord, it makes sense to advertise that they're still open, right? They even often have shortcuts built inside them. Now like I said, showing background apps is coming back, just not to the extent that I would like it to see. 
Another thing that sees some improvements in GNOME 44 and also back in GNOME 42 is the shift from certain settings from the tweaks utility over to the GNOME settings. Now you still need tweaks if you want to enable the scaling and minimize buttons as well as adjust the date time settings up top but it's nice to see that some more essential parts are making their way into the settings. But for real, just get rid of the tweaks app already. I would already prefer it if it was in the main settings as it is. One thing that I really miss when thinking about Windows is popping out a browser tab, dragging it to another screen and automatically resize it. Now frankly I didn't verify if that is even a GNOME issue or just a browser problem but I just don't care. I don't like it that I have to pop it out, drag it over here, re-grab it and then resize it. Like why? This actually feels more like a bug than a missing feature, so whoever is responsible for this, please fix. There are of course more minor issues like not having audio bitrate options, the missing slideshow functionality by default and that most extensions break over a major update. But overall those were all of the issues that I encountered by just using it. And frankly it's actually not that many. Compared to other desktop environments like KDE, where the first problem already was the monitor setup, this got fixed by the way, I personally still prefer GNOME over everything else. It's not perfect and I've shown that. But what really is? All I want to do now is to read about your experiences with GNOME. Did you encounter similar problems? Let me know in the comments down below. Oh, and while you're on the way down there, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more content like this. This video is also interesting for you I guess. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.